If you're new to dirt biking or you've been dirt biking for years, there's something we all have in common and that's the need to repair and maintain our dirt bikes. If you always take your bike to the shop for repair and maintenance items, you're going to pay a lot more than if you just did it yourself. And the truth is, most maintenance and repairs are relatively simple and straightforward. However, there are several special tools that'll make your life a lot easier and allow you to make repairs quickly and easily and avoid frustration. Of course, you're going to need all the usual hand tools that you might have in your garage, so I'm not going to cover those in detail. I'm going to talk about some of the specialty tools that I like for repairing and maintaining our dirt bikes. So let's head to the garage. All right, so we'll start over here. First thing I'll mention is a pair of snap ring pliers. And uh, if you work on dirt bikes long enough, you're going to encounter snap rings, whether they are internal or external snap rings. You know, a decent snap ring plier set uh, will come with the different attachments for the various sizes and whether they are snapped inside or outside. Chains rarely come at the exact length that you need. They're almost always a few lengths longer. They come in standard lengths. So you're definitely going to need a chain breaker. These don't cost a lot. When you need to break a chain, it's a lot easier to use this than to have to grind off the pins. It's handy to have a spring puller to be able to attach and uh, remove springs, uh, exhaust springs and that sort of thing. So it's extremely handy to have one of those. Um, if you are riding four strokes, you're going to need a good feeler gauge set for when you need to check valve clearance. And this one is, I got this one from Rocky Mountain. It's specific for, uh, for dirt bikes or motorcycles in general. And uh, the feeler gauge strips are, are narrow at the end. So uh, on a dirt bike, a lot of times you'll find that the areas that you need to get the feeler gauge into are pretty small and cramped. These are helpful. For that, the standard automotive feeler gauge sets uh, are a standard width all the way to the end, so sometimes these are hard to get into those confined spaces. Um, this is one of the handiest tools that I've ever purchased, and it is a uh, inflator. Uh, I take this with me every time I go riding, and it's perfect for inflating dirt bike tires. It also works very well with the tubeless system um, and if you're familiar with that, you'll, you know that uh, on the tuba system, you have to uh, inflate the high pressure chamber to you know, 100 to 110 PSI. And this handles that very well. It, I've never had a problem with this inflator. Um, I think they quit making the Craftsman branded uh, inflator, but this is actually made by Ryobi. Um, and I'll include a link to the Ryobi version in the, down in the description. Um, it works very well on dirt bike tires, bicycle tires, uh, things like that that are pretty low volume. Um, if you use it on truck tires or trailer tires, it works fine, but it just takes a little bit longer. This thing's perfect for dirt bikes. It uses batteries uh, that work with the drill, so uh, I typically always have one of those ready to go and charge. Um, if you ride dirt bikes a lot, you're going to need to get a very good tire pressure gauge. The tire pressure gauges that uh, are for automotive use just don't work very well for dirt bikes. Um, the ones with the little stick and the, and the uh, little indicator that comes out the end, they're not accurate enough. Um, if you're riding dirt bikes, you're going to want to uh, have something really accurate and have a really good high quality um, tire gauge. You're going to want an assortment of Allen wrenches in various sizes. You're going to want metric sizes. Um, you're going to want different types of Allen wrenches just depending on where you need to get. Sometimes they won't get into those areas, uh, a tight area that you may need to get into. You might need an individual Allen wrench set like this. Um, some of the other larger Allen wrench bolts, um, you're going to need a socket set that has uh, hex heads on it. So these are really handy for higher torque fasteners or fasteners where you need to use a uh, torque wrench to get a specific torque rating or something like that. These are better uh, when you get into the larger sizes, the uh, smaller Allen wrenches don't work so well. Also, you're going to want the same um, assortment of Torx wrenches, especially if you have European dirt bikes like KTM, Husqvarna. You're going to want these Torx wrenches uh, and, and the same assortment. The individual Torx wrenches as well as the socket style Torx wrenches for higher torque applications. You're going to need a good compression tester, uh, especially if you have two-stroke dirt bikes. You need to keep a watch on 
compression to know when you need to replace your rings, a piston, you might need to check compression if your bike's not running right or something. So a good compression tester is, is a must have in my opinion. When you buy a compression tester, make sure it's got a Schrader valve in the end that goes into the spark plug hole. The Schrader valve actually separates the combustion chamber from the hose to give you an accurate reading. Don't make the same mistake I made and buy this compression tester kit from Harbor Freight. This kit looks like a very nice kit, but the end that screws into your spark plug does not have a Schrader valve. It doesn't have a one-way valve. So essentially what's, what's taking place, the entire length of this hose is being measured as part of the combustion chamber, and you don't get an accurate measurement that way. This kit is complete junk. You can't depend on it, it doesn't work. So I definitely would not recommend getting this Harbor Freight tool. Some of their tools are great. I've got a lot of Harbor Freight stuff. Some of it's good stuff, not this compression tester kit. You're gonna need a good set of tire spoons. I really like this style of tire spoon. Uh, I like the shape of this. It, I, I, it seems like I have a better feel with this shape and getting the tire on and off the rim without pinching tubes or doing any other damage. These seem to work really well. You're gonna need at least three of those. Bead buddies, really nice to have. I actually have two of them. Uh, but when you're changing a tire, these bead buddies just make things easier and it's like having an extra hand. You're gonna need a good valve core removal tool. This removes the valve core from the valve stem. Uh, so you're definitely gonna need one of those. Uh, you're gonna need some extra, extra Schrader valves. Uh, and a tube repair kit. Chase will uh, damage tubes sometimes. He still runs tubes on his bike. It's nice to have a tube repair kit so that you don't ruin your day of riding with a flat. A basic tire changing stand comes in really handy and it makes it a lot easier to change tires. These work pretty well for tubes or tubeless. If you're running mooses, you know, you might want something a little, little heavier duty. Uh, Loctite. A lot of fasteners on dirt bikes require Loctite to stay tight. You don't want things vibrating loose. The red Loctite is uh, the more permanent version. The blue Loctite is a medium strength. That's what I use most of the time is this uh, Loctite 243. I prefer the actual Loctite brand. Most of the thread locker you find in stores nowadays is actually a Permatex brand. It's Permatex thread locker. It's actually kind of hard. I, I, I haven't been able to find the actual brand Loctite in a store in a while. I've been having to order this stuff from Amazon. Um, like I said, 243 is my favorite. Uh, 242 is also medium strength blue thread locker, but 243 is oil resistant. So you don't necessarily have to worry about the fasteners be, being as clean. You'll still get the performance out of the Loctite 243, even if you've got oil or contamination on your fastener. Uh, 242 is, is actually more common, but 242 is not oil resistant. You're gonna need a good sag scale or getting your sag set correctly is critical to getting your bike to perform and, and turn the way that you want it to. Um, there are a lot of good videos on YouTube for setting sag. Uh, these don't cost a lot of money, so you definitely want one of those. You're gonna need a good torque wrench. Torque wrench just allows you to apply a specific amount of torque to fasteners, and there are many fasteners on dirt bikes that require a specific amount of torque. Uh, for example, fork tubes, if you over tighten those, it can be really bad. So you'll want a, uh, a torque wrench, at least one torque wrench, to uh, make sure you don't over tighten things and that you get things to the proper torque. This actually started out as a KTM hardware kit, but over the, over the past couple of years, it's just kind of turned into a catch-all for hardware. Um, and anytime we get extra parts or extra screws or bolts or whatever, uh, they go in here and that way we could, if we run into a problem, we usually have what we need in here to fix it. We ran out of room in the original box that the KTM hardware came in. So uh, we just bought this box to put everything in and this is a handy little thing to carry with us when we go riding to make sure that we have things that we need. This is a seal puller and this is a handy item to have when you're changing bearings and you need to pull out a seal or any other type of seal. You can hook up under the seal and pull the seal right out. This is a slide hammer and bearing puller set. Uh, of course, there's the slide hammer, but it has these blind bearing puller uh, adapters. So you find the right size adapter, you insert it down into the bearing, and then you tighten this, uh, and it spreads out on the inner race of the bearing. Uh, and then you attach the uh, slide hammer to it. So once it's in the bearing, 
you can yank it right out with that thing. It makes changing wheel bearings really easy. And the last thing I'll talk about is this tap and die set. I find myself using this more often than not just to clean off bolts and stuff. A lot of times bolts you take out will have a, a lot of old Loctite and stuff like that on them. So I, I use these chasers um, just, to, just to clean off the threads and get old Loctite and stuff off of bolts. And that's what I use this for more often than not. You can use these taps to clean the Loctite out of threads as well. Let me know in the comments if there are specialty tools that you use for repairing and maintaining your dirt bike. There are workarounds for almost every tool I've shown here and ways to do the repair without the special tool. But for me, I'd rather get the repair done quickly and avoid frustration of trying to do it without the right tool. I've included links in the video description for the tools that I've talked about today. I hope this video helped you in some way. And if it did, please consider clicking that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.